Hey guys, so today's video is a lot of work that I've done to my tractor Big Blue. Um, as you can see it's getting some new tires fitted by Gordon from JB Tires. I wish I had recorded uh, everything he told me about these tires. He was an absolute wealth of information and uh, he's been working at tires for a lifetime. I was blown away by all the facts and statistics he was telling me and tire knowledge was just astronomical. Check out JB Tires, I'll put a link in the description below. Serious boy. She's starting to look the part. Fair play to you. Oh, that's mighty looking boy. Mighty. Oh, mighty. Flip me, she looks like a tractor now. <laughs> so she always looked like a... Oh. She, she just the wrong shoes for uh, the dance floor. That's serious boy. That is serious. Wrong shoes for the dance floor class all together so now we've got the tires the next logical step more power <laughs> so yeah we've pretty much maxed out the fuel pump um, in its standard form and uh, we've definitely maxed out the turbo uh, exhaust gas temps are pretty high whenever it's under heavy load it'll sustain It'll sustain pretty much 250 horsepower indefinitely, but once you get up into 270, 300, it goes into the red pretty quickly. So, in order to bring that those exhaust gas temperatures down a bit, we need a bigger turbo, um, bigger turbo, more air, more diesel, more horsepower. So, uh, I believe there's a lot, a lot of uh, potential left in this engine without stressing it too much. So, a uh, big competition coming up the beginning of next month. Uh, Farm Flicks on the pull. Check out their channel. They do some absolutely fantastic, almost document documentary quality videos. That's Farm Flicks. Uh, they're holding a large event, racing tractors side by side up a hill with a big trailer. So, the drive is to try and get some more horsepower. Uh, sorted in time for that in about a month so some mega competition big big tractors going against me and um, I wanna I wanna I'm not gonna lie I wanna get to the top of the hill first so so we'll pull this turbo off I researched and looked and figured and it comes to the conclusion that holds it the HX50 should give me the air I need hopefully without being too laggy I wanna leave the tractor still nice and usable and drivable without being very laggy having all the power high up and dead bottom end so I reckon the holes at the HX50 is the one so we'll get this uh, Garrett pulled off and um, see if we can uh, get the adapters sorted and put the holes it on so stay tuned hopefully that's not what it could be um, I don't want to say the word, but uh, we'll not go there. Um, yeah, heat shield, so I'm going to pull this off. I've got some new exhaust wrapping to put around this. But uh, yeah, I think I might go and get some water and spray this. Just in case it is. So be aware of that, folks, if you're messing around with uh, hot uh, items that experience high temperature that are lagged with a heat insulator. Just be very careful that it's not, in fact, asbestos. I need a, I need a camera I can wear. See, trying to do everyone one hand. It's a bollocks. It's a bollocks. So it is. Oh, that's a, a sturdy big hose. Ugh. Cutting edge engineering. His, his, uh, <laughs> His missus or girlfriend or whatever. She she's his full time personal camera person. Yes. So he seriously giving me the notion of trying to talk my wife into doing my <laughs> video person. Have a pay. Oh. <laughs> uh, there's a bit in her. We with a float already. There's a bit in her. This is over seven thousand hours on the clock, so uh, there is a bit alright. <laughs> she was she was getting changed, just uh, sorry, upgraded. Up just in time. at the right time, yep. <laughs>
Don't lose your copper washers, top and bottom. Grunt to get it loose. in the bottom. So that's all the easy bits. This is where it all goes pear shaped. I think I'm definitely gonna need two hands. I'll see you in a minute for see if I break any or not. That's all four off, and that's the turbo completely disconnected, so we'll uh, see what two hands required, and there we go. Do the obligatory spin spin. Glad we changed that. That little turbo is working at its absolute maximum at 340 horsepower. Um, as you can see, the bushes are probably just just on their limit. So good turbo. We'll probably get it reconditioned and keep it for some of the standard tractors. Say my father would love to get hold of that. But really glad, really glad we got that in time. So. That's her off. Time to offer up the big one and see if it's going to work. So, good old eBay. Managed to track down a nice adapter. Yes, we're in an engineering shop and yes, we could have made that, but someone's taken the time to measure it and uh, batch produce them at a price you just, you just couldn't be bothered. Uh, starting into making it for the price you can buy it so lovely little adapter going from the new HX50 as a T6 which is these outer holes and the old turbo is a T3 so we'll offer up these adapters and see how it's going to look to get a, a few new studs they're not too healthy looking but they'll do just for checking to see if this is going to work yes right so my concern is that the new turbo is going to be filing with these so we'll just offer it up and see so before we offer it up we're going to have to look at clocking the housings so this snail and this snail and the center cartridge all can turn independently of each other to allow the outlet and the inlet to be in different positions and this little bracket for the wastegate 
My only concern at the moment is the wastegate and the uh, the outlet are gonna gonna be in uh, competition, but we'll uh, we'll come to some arrangement. Mm. Spinny, 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 spinny. Need to be very, very careful not not touch these fins. So I have to put the the wastegate diaphragm somewhere around here. So we'll just take a guess. So unfortunately, uh, this way escape bracket, the clocking rotation um, isn't going to work. It's that's filing with the uh, the outlet. So I'm going to have to cut the uh, diaphragm off, put the ring back on because this ring holds the outer of the the housing onto the onto the core. So I'll chop this off and put the ring back on. And then we'll re relocate the uh, diaphragm afterwards. It's a good bit bigger when you see it like that. So that's the divider plate put in and the holes milled out a little bit allowing me to retain my original studs. It's great having a car guy at work understands all this tuning shit. <laughs> Lewis the legend sorted me out. So adapter plate's threaded and the turbo's threaded so I need to make the call on which one to drill out and there's only access from here for the bolts so drill these these threads out. So next thing I had to do there was buff these studs down because they were slightly protruding. We have them just about flush ready to bolt the turbo down on top. So we'll uh, go and get the nuts and lock washers and uh, bolt that down hopefully for good. And of course the, uh, the little exhaust gasket. Nasty habit of giving myself a whole lot more grief at this stage, so we'll just not go there. Right, snug, beautiful, turbo time. I just got a little bit of hose lengthened, the correct length, to connect the uh, wastegate diaphragm to the little outlet. Uh, next thing I need to do is tack on, tack weld the wastegate onto the body and then we'll see about putting a wee bit of plate in here just to make it all nice and rigid. So turbo bolted on temporarily to assess pipe locations and this rubber needs cut a section cut out of the middle to allow this mouth to rise up. So we'll take it in, mark it up, cut some rubber out of it, put a metal joiner on the inside and uh, two, ju two extra jubilee clips around it should allow that to come up to where we need it. So that's the hose all cut. I'll just have a piece of four inch pipe on the inside here and a jubilee clip each side. Um, next we'll try the, the intercooler pipe, see what we need to chop off that. Of course, peak of our summer, trying to do this in the rain. Lovely. Who's of the bond here? Yeah. Yeah, that's looking damn good. Shit, it's so good having a car guy in work. <laughs> no, 
Oh, look at the sweep on that, flipping beautiful. Um, so you need one of them holders. The big stinking Lincoln. Ah, it's class. Beautiful, hot off the welding bench, still warm. That's the exhaust gas temp probe hole, ready to rock. So we'll go down, bolt it on, and then we just need the oil line and we're good to go. On this folks, that's why I love to live in Australia. We're the peak of our summer and we have had approximately four or five weeks of this. We've had four weeks of good weather. When I say good weather, I mean you can sit outside in the evening in the garden and have, have your dinner or have your breakfast in the garden in the morning in t-shirt and shorts. Just a normal life that other lovely climates are used to. But if we get four weeks of that a year we're doing very well so yeah I'm definitely missing Australia when it's like this <sighs> need to get out of the tractor don't want to get soaked so I'm just gonna refit the factory pyrometer or pyro uh, this measures exhaust gas temperatures out of the turbo and that's one of your main indicators of state of tune on a diesel engine how much fuel it's getting well how hot it is in relation to how much fuel it's getting and uh, very important to watch those exhaust gas temps and not uh, Keep them too high for too long. This is factory factory sensor on this tractor, which is a really neat touch. Um, so the really cool thing I want to see is with the exhaust gas temperature, the new bigger turbo. I want to put this on the dyno with the fueling unaltered to see if it has brought the exhaust gas temps down. Uh, and hopefully an increase in horsepower before fueling as well, but we'll see. So that's the exhaust gas temp pyrometer mounted. Next thing I want to do is, uh, because I'm tight for time, I didn't have time to order a bellow for up here just to allow for any misalignment. And as a result of that, as a result of that we've got a couple of little leak points so I'm just going to wrap those in exhaust tape for the time being try and keep as much heat and soot contained within the pipe where it should be so we'll uh, wrap that up and uh, wrap some down the, the manifold directly out of the turbo just to try and keep temperatures down underneath this fiberglass hood because the last thing we want is a fire and whenever this thing's under load that complete pipe is going to be cherry red at least maybe even yellow so the next thing I'm looking at 
just changing my boost gauge, my current boost gauge only reads to about 40 psi and I'm reckoning I'm going to be 50 plus so I need to uh, find a, a key live here for the backlight on the gauge. Well, it's not really nice of them. We have two blank auxiliary switches here so I'll get a feed off those. Outstanding. Ordered the wrong flipping oil feed pipe, didn't I? See if the wrong one in my eBay watch list. Don't suppose anybody is one I am lying about anywhere. Not looking good for Balamina anyway. Damn it. Right at the final hurdle. Nearly there. Well boys, guess what legend robbed one off his generator. <laughs> Just to get me going. <laughs> uh, outstanding. Outstanding. So yeah, we're ready for a start up. So as you was saying, we might just turn her over on the starter and bleed some oil up that pipe before we hit go so yeah just putting some uh, heat reflective tape on try and, try and minimize try and minimize the the heat on the fiberglass bonnet Definitely gonna need two hands for this. Keep the heat away from those little cables which go up to the headlights and just keep general bit of heat off the inside of the, the hood. So hopefully that's a little bit extra, every little helps. Whenever the bell arrives, I'm gonna put it in here, the flexible joint, just to take up any misalignment. So that was the first drive with the new turbo and uh, very happy. It's not really laggy at all. It drives almost like the standard tractor did before I turned the fuel up with the standard turbo. Uh, the new bigger turbo is driving the same as that with the fuel turned up to 330 horsepower. So very pleased with how it's driving. So, um, so next up is we're going to take it to a dyno and uh, we want to see what those EGTs are like, what sort of horsepower they can sustain and what sort of boost numbers it's making. Now the fuel hasn't been adjusted since the old standard turbo and the new bigger turbo. The fuel is still at the 330 horsepower level as it was with the old turbo so it'll be interesting to see uh, with the new turbo the same quantity of fuel, uh, what differences there are. I'm not expecting any power difference because it's uh, fuel that creates the power. Um, I'm expecting cooler exhaust gas temps and uh, the power to be at a different RPM. Uh, I reckon it's probably about 200 RPM higher um, where the tractor would have kicked in hard and pulled at 15 that would drag right it would lug down to 1400 but it would it would certainly be pulling hard at 15 uh, it's now currently uh, spooling up at about 1700 rpm uh, so yeah still very happy with that um, so yeah we'll go to the dyno and um, get some numbers on and then after the dyno, it will be time for some big fuel modifications and we'll really see, start to see if we can pull some horsepower out of this. So yeah, stay tuned guys and if you're enjoying it, give me a thumbs up. Click that subscribe if you want to stay for more, greatly appreciated. Uh, a lot of my viewers uh, 
watch my videos and don't remember to subscribe so I'm not I'm not uh, badgering you but uh, it's a little reminder uh, your subscription means a lot to me and uh, so does your support so yeah stay tuned we'll go get some dino numbers and uh, turn this thing up and see what it can do So short through the dyno run with the new turbo was the rush down to diesel engineering services. This was the big push to get uh, some extra fuel, to get extra horsepower in time for on the pull event. So diesel engineering services fitted 13 millimeter elements into my original pump. They fitted bigger delivery valves supplied by Dickenberg Diesel in the Netherlands and they also fitted higher flow nozzles to my injectors. They balanced everything on their equipment, set it all up and uh, reinstalled it. And thanks to Diesel Engineering Services for doing this at short notice. So, starting to get exciting. That's us just back from Diesel Engineering Services in Shercock. Big thank you to Michael for getting the job done for me in a bit of a hurry. Pulled out all the stops and thanks to Carl that done the fitting. Uh, much appreciated. So yeah, um, it's Thursday night. Show is on Saturday morning. And a final few things to do of the change over the drawbar and I want to have a final fiddle with the pump. Um, I want to fiddle with the uh, the AFC, which reg regulates the fuel delivery in relation to boost. I want to actually turn the smoke down a bit. <clears throat> um, I'm not able to load the tractor very heavily, just driving up a steep hill, and it's making approximately 45 psi of boost. So. I reckon it's in the low 400 horsepower, so I might actually even turn that up a little bit. Um, got these really cool parts from Dickenberg Diesel, I think they're in Holland. Um, externally adjustable cap for the back of the pump, so I can simply turn turn the fuel up and down there without having to take the cap off. Um, so we got. 13 mil elements put in the pump and we got five hole in, uh, injectors from Dickenberg Diesel as well so big thanks to them for prompt postage so yeah she should be pushing lots of power now but I still hope to retain a usable tractor that can go farming the bigger turbo still drives really nice, it's not as laggy as I was expecting and I can turn the fuel down on that pump to get rid of crazy smoke and it should still drive very nice and be a reasonably usable tractor um, so yeah, I need to change over the drawbar put a wing mirror on um, I need to put a strut on the hood or bonnet if you're in America <laughs> um, a few other little odds and ends but the main thing being adjusting at the pump so i'll get that done and that's us ready for farm flicks on the pull the big event tomorrow um yeah i'm i'm gunning to get to the top of the hill first so uh we'll see how we go hopefully we don't burst the pipe boost pipe i uh, don't have the right gasket on the turbo to the manifold either 
Um, so a few little things that could go wrong, but we'll give her lots of and see how she goes. Um, I might also try and squeeze in a dyno run to try and get an F estimation of horsepower. Um, so I don't want to go too crazy with horsepower. Um, and yeah, if we can squeeze that in before, we will. So stay tuned, guys. Actually sounds like my dad's 141 Muir Hill taking over. So I'm going to wrap the video up there guys, um, stay tuned for Big Blue Project Part 2, um, we go to On The Pull, um, it's going to be the big competition racing up the hill with heavily loaded trailers, uh, it's being held by Farm Flicks with an X, check those guys out on YouTube here, they do some awesome uh, farming content videos. Um, and they support me so yeah I just want to give those guys a little shout out so uh, so yeah part two will be the big competition I'll have some serious uh, races against a much more modern uh, Massey Ferguson 8480 which is in the high 300 horsepower plus range um, so yeah I'll either be very happy or disappointed depending how my tractor does um, I'm going into this race with unknown horsepower um, so I'll also try to get a visit to a dyno at some stage and put that in part two as well. Um, I'll be taking part in the race with a pretty bad transmission delay so although I'm going to run a lot of power that's still going to hurt me pretty bad because when I let go of the pedal my tractor is quite slow to set off. Um, I need to investigate that further. Um, so yeah guys, if you're enjoying this uh, Ford New Holland Genesis 70 series content, um, click subscribe for there be more videos coming up. And uh, I have also created an absolutely awesome uh, Facebook group, Ford New Holland 70 series. Check that page out. It is an absolute wealth of information. And uh, I just want to say thanks to the guys that I was chatting to on there that gave me some uh, tractor pulling tuning advice uh, uh, for uh, getting more power out of my tractor. So a big thanks to those guys. And yeah, a big thanks to Brian Horner and Juker for uh, loaning me the dyno. Thanks to my dad for helping me with my turbo. And thanks to Lewis uh, for helping me with exhaust and stuff like that. It's been a real team effort. So uh Delighted with how it's going so far. Tune in to part two to see if it's a winner or not. Uh, fingers crossed. So anyway guys, appreciate your support as always. Like, subscribe, share, whatever. Ring that notification bell, yada yada yada. You know the drill. Anyway, next time, over and out. Cheers. Stay